My name is Jess, and I'm going to be starting off by telling you a personal story of the day I converted and the situations and people that helped me following that day. I decided to convert just over four years ago at Friday Drama at the Islamic Center here in London. On the day of my conversion, I had met a couple of friends at the center who had set up that day for me with Dr. Munir. On the day of my conversion, I also had a family that had found out that I was wanting to convert, and so they also attended the center to be there to support me. When I got home that day, I called my family, who had literally the morning out begged me not to go forth with converting. I knew what they were going through and how they were feeling, but I also needed to tell them about the amazing day that I had just experienced. I talked to my family about everything, so I couldn't, in my heart, hold this experience back from them. I spoke to them about how as soon as I finished saying my shahada, the whole women's side of the mosque was lined up behind me to be ready to hug me and congratulate me and welcome me into Islam. They were handing me pieces of paper with their names and their numbers as they were Quran teachers and Arabic teachers and they were telling me, I'm just here for you to talk to me if you need to call. I told my parents about this amazing family that as soon as I had finished my shahada, they had given me flowers and then took me out for lunch and how I would be going to sushi that night with two other of my Muslim friends that were there with me at the mosque that day. I told my parents that I had never felt community like that before. I had never felt love from strangers like that before. If there is one thing that my dad to this day says is that he misses the feeling of community in North America. It's just not the same as it used to be when he was growing up. Now community can really make or break a convert. And when I say that, I'm not talking about whether there is a community present. I'm talking about was that convert brought into the community and accepted? And if so, how? And if not, why not? One of my dad's biggest fears for when I told him I wanted to convert to being Muslim was not what you expect from the media. It was that I would not be accepted by the Muslim community as a white Canadian female. Whether that meant with making friends or when I wanted to get married and that family not accepting their son to marry me. My dad feared that I was chasing a life that would cause me pain, not physically, but emotionally. When you raise a child and you put your whole effort and love into them, and they choose a different pathway from what you have raised them on, and then that pathway leads to pain and rejection or loneliness, that would hurt any parent. You want your child to succeed, and everything that they do. You don't want them to ever struggle. And converting to Islam in itself can be a struggle. And that convert may lose a lot of old friends or a lot of family. So when they're not brought into the community, the Muslim community, and they're not making those bonds or those connections, then they're essentially losing most of the people that they're close to. And that can be very lonely. So when I told my dad about the day that I had experienced that Jama'a prayer, it was like Allah had opened his heart. SubhanAllah. He went from begging me not to in the morning to telling me that I had chosen the right path, that I had come to the fork in the road and made the difficult choice. And those who are enlightened choose the difficult option when they're faced with a decision. He was genuinely happy for me. Now my talk today is not about my family accepting me becoming a Muslim. It is about the London Muslim community becoming my community that day. And I'll tell you how that happened for me. Those two friends who arranged my shahada with Dr. Munir are a married couple. 
I spent week after week at their house for dinner or with their families. They were my lifeline, the two people that I felt closest to, my solid ground as my whole world was turning upside down. Everything in my life was changing, but their support and their guidance made everything easier for me. Their lack of judgment and their ease and their compassion for Islam allowed me to develop my own love for the religion without feeling ever pressured to look or act a certain way. I am blessed to say that to this day, they are still two of my closest friends. Alhamdulillah. Now going back to that Muslim family that also attended my Shahada at the Islamic Center, as soon as I had finished, they had come out with flowers and asked to take me to lunch that day. They then continuously invited me over for dinner or out to dinner with their family or out to lunches or meeting for cake and coffee. Just me and their family. They made me feel like I was a part of their life. I became extremely close with the whole family. I called the grandmother, Teda. She is my Muslim grandmother and, and Jaddo, my Muslim grandfather. I was introduced to Noor Gardens because of this family. I got a message one day that they wanted to invite me to a fundraising dinner. They had already purchased my ticket and all I needed to do was just go. That was my first event and fundraiser as a Muslim. And little did I know, I actually met my future husband there. They continued to do this for many, many events and fundraisers afterwards. I'll tell you though, I never knew about these events prior to them telling me. I never saw posters or advertisements or statuses on social media. I never knew a lot of things going on in the community unless they told me, and they did, all of the time. They brought me into their home and under their wing. They introduced me to their cousins and their friends who then would invite me to their dinners. My small Muslim circle began to grow and it grew fast. I spent eight in Ramadan with them for the next two years and it didn't stop because they disappeared, but because I got married, alhamdulillah, I formed my own family who I then was blessed to spend eight in Ramadan with even though I tried to see this family as much as I could. I truly believe though, if I didn't get married, I'd still be spending eight in Ramadan with them and be sitting at their table at fundraising dinners and events. Now as a community, we may try to reach out to people, but I've heard it termed as the puppy dog method, where you tell converts, let's get together, come for dinner, let's do this, and everything is exciting in the beginning. And then with time, our schedules get busy, that we get consumed in our lives and we no longer reach out and we fade away. Or when we do reach out, we say we're sorry, let's get together, and it doesn't happen again. Why? Because our lives are busy, right? But that family's life was busy, and they still reached out and made plans to work. Now on the flip side, as a convert, I was very open to spending any opportunity I could with them. However, I do know that converts can be shy and may not want to reach out, and they may feel like they're imposing on families or individuals, and that was also me at times. So at times, I didn't reach out either, but that family still did. It is a forgotten sunnah of the Prophet that when the people from Mecca performed Hijra to Medina, the Prophet carried every one of the Muhajirun with someone from the Ansar together to be bound in brotherhood. He did this to create an easier assimilation for both sides to form that strong community. These pairings of brothers formed such strong bonds that at one point they were to receive inheritance if the other died just as family would. It wasn't until a couple of years later that the inheritance was then deemed for just blood relatives, but that was after deep bonds had already been formed. Ultimately, the bonding of these brothers helped create the successful community in Medina. Now, sisters and brothers, I'm here telling you that there are a lot of converts in London for one we may not know about, 
and for two, don't have people to make them feel like they are a part of this community. There's a term I've always used because I've experienced it myself. I call it the convert crash. When one converts to Islam, they often surge on this spiritual high, dive head first into the religion. But six months down the line or so, they crash, and they crash hard. And when we crash, who is around us? When I crashed, I had that married couple, and I had that family to lean on, to find my footing again, to allow me to discover that balance that consisted of spiritual connection and a knowledge base. I'm here telling you that a big reason why I am personally here today is because Allah put those people in my life and they stuck around and kept me in theirs. So please, let's not continue to allow that sunnah of the Prophet to be termed the forgotten sunnah. I urge you, create deep connections with each other and bring people into this community, whether that be converts or newcomers or people from different cultures. I know, I know it helps me. I'm sure that it would help them. The community is only as strong as the bonds that pull us together. I have a lot to thank for putting the London Muslim community in my life. So I have an urge to give back to community and the Muslim Ummah. So alhamdulillah, I started JBL Hijabs with the intention to give back even in the slightest of ways. So a portion of our profit goes towards Islamic Relief Orphan Sponsorship Program. Being a part of community can make all of the difference. I know it did for me. Thank you.